so these are some questions from a progressive rock form called progressive ears and this question is from NSJ okay NSJ yeah don't know what that's initials okay I guess probably okay health chops hands how have how has your arrangements changed on the difficult pieces like Tarkas what musical passages have proven difficult over the years oh boy good question difficult I suppose all music can be difficult when you when you really sit down and analyze it you know from the most simplistic composition to the most complicated sometimes the most complicated pieces I've written like Tarkas can present certain difficulties when difficulties when you readdress them in a in a different matter um, subconsciously you can play Tarkas well I play Tarkas some, sometimes subconsciously but, but when it really comes down to playing it in a different perspective you go oh okay so um, I think it's a bit like any uh, any classical piece that uh, you really cannot take pieces for granted it's always very good to actually readdress them and, and break them down into and probably play them extremely slowly uh, that's a good test and I've, I've heard it said by many a, a great classical pianist who's probably played the flight of the bumblebee automatically for so long until suddenly you say to him well don't play it so fast. Can you play it at, at <laughs> <Right>. this tempo? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and it, it does become a little bit of a shock. So, having said that, I can't think of any one particular piece. I think that you, you just have to be aware all the time of, um, you know, don't take a particular piece for granted. Um, and take it right back to a very slow tempo and almost uh, you go through a process sometimes of relearning something that you haven't probably played for a long time you know. do you um, do you make notes um, as reminders on your keyboard for yourself for any chord changes or for any cues or anything not really but I have readdressed recently <coughs> Tarkas and some of the sonorities and the uh, chord progressions. I was doing that in um, when I was playing with the Munich Symphony Orchestra. Uh, there were various cadenzas which I played so many times the same way. It was on the original recording and I thought well I have to keep it the same way. And I thought no, why do I have to keep the cadenza? It's a cadenza. Why do I have to play it the same as on the last recording? And I had a little practice piano in my dressing room, and um, suddenly it was like I came up with this new chord sequence. It was the same, basically the same uh, piano cadenza which I'd always played, but just this change, this modulation that, that I played, I just went, wow, why didn't I think of that before, you know? So, uh, it's the same, you know, with Tarkas and with, with all the uh, the classics, which I've come up with. Uh, you know, I was just sitting there waiting for the orchestra to be rehearsed by Toye Mickelson and, uh, you know, Mark Bonilla playing, uh, being there. I just thought, uh, well, they didn't need me. Well, I, I already approved of the arrangement. But I had a like about two hours on my own in you know my rehearsal room with a, an upright piano and came up with all these ideas. And when I went out there to do my bit, everybody's going, "How did you come up with that?" <laughs> you know, it was really. It, I was really quite proud. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
and this is from Sean. He's uh, asking if you have any regrets on swapping out the organ with uh, with the Yamaha GX1. I don't have any regrets, no. But I do remember that the uh, the fan base, whatever you know, the, the people. That, oh, that's not, you know, you don't play the Hammond anymore. Um, <laughs> so. I suppose it had the same reaction as Bob Dylan going from you know, folk music to electronic, you know, it's, uh, you're a Judas, you know, <laughs> you cheated on us, you've gone electric, this is horrible, um, but I mean, you, how could you resist such a, a fine instrument as the, as the Yamaha? I mean, for instance, Fanfare for the Common Man would, would not... You couldn't, you couldn't play something like that in the Hammond organ. No way. You can't play fanfare for the common man on a piano, really. Well, you can do it on a, on a piano, but it, of course, it doesn't really work that, that well. You know, you can come up with the notes, but it... You know, certain instruments are designed to... Um, for certain pieces of music. When I write a piece of music, it's written in a specific key because it sounds best in that key. If you have to transpose something like Welcome Back My Friends, which I've had to do sometimes, it it's a bit disappointing, but uh, y you can tell. It's just, uh, it, it, it is a, it's a bit of a shame, you know. But it sounds uh, you know, so I, I think the, ba basically the audience do, do uh, you know, I don't think they're, I'm sure that most of them are, um, have perfect pitch and go, ooh, it's a tone, it's a semitone la. You know, I'm, I know people do have perfect pitch, but uh, I have relevant pitch. Um, but, uh, and I suppose in a, to a degree, uh, perfect pitch would be an interruption to what I try and achieve uh, from an improvisational level.